some mothers wait a lifetime to hear that sound. But government data shows expectant black mothers are at a much higher risk of not seeing their child grow up. According to the CDC, a third of the women who died from pregnancy-related complications in 2020 were black. That rate is three times higher than white counterparts. The CDC lists several factors that contribute to these disproportionate birth outcomes for mothers. They range from variation in quality health care to underlying chronic conditions and structural racism and implicit bias. We traveled to Northwestern Medicine Hospital outside of Chicago, where we met with maternal fetal medicine specialist, Dr. Latasha Nelson. She told us the complications and disparities trace back centuries. If you could boil this down to an essence, why are black mothers dying at a disproportionate rate from pregnancy-related issues? When we look at maternal mortality in black women, we have to take into account the historical perspective of how black women have been treated, in, especially in the field of obstetrics and gynecology. But then you have to weigh in the implicit bias um, that is uh, perceived by a population of physicians that really don't look like their patients sometimes. Researchers at the Medicare and Medicaid Research Review say these issues date back to the late 1700s. At the time, the U.S. Census classified black people as three-fifths of a person. In the 1800s, the man credited as the father of modern gynecology, James Marion Sims, experimented on enslaved black women and denied them therapeutic treatment. Back at Northwestern Medicine, Dr. Nelson says uprooting this neglect begins with approaching each case individually. We all come to a situation with our own biases and we have to own that. And I think that when we begin to own that, we can address that. We look at the care that they got from the time they came into the hospital. Were they greeted um, at the front desk the same as any person? When they came through the emergency department, were they triaged the same way? She brought us into the emergency room, a place where Dr. Nelson says pregnant black women are frequently misdiagnosed. Elevated blood pressures in pregnancy above what would, that's not normal. Especially in the mid-trimesters where typically we have lower blood pressures. So missing that and just sending her home, giving her Tylenol because she had a headache, mm -hmm. not realizing that that headache was related to preeclampsia. Sending her home. Um, you mentioned pain earlier. You know, ignoring pain complaints. So women come in and they have reflux, heartburn. That can be a sign of preeclampsia. And you give them an antacid and they go home. Women may come in with right upper quadrant pain and you say, oh, it's just because she's pregnant. It could be um, liver rupture. Even a highly utilized procedure is cited as a factor behind maternal mortality, C-sections. From 1996 to 2011, the American College for Obstetrics and Gynecologists found that 13 and a half cesarean deliveries out of every 100,000 births resulted in the death of the mother. That's compared to about three and a half for vaginal deliveries. Cesarean deliveries are inherently more risky to mom and baby than is the vaginal delivery. And whether that be through the a priori risk of why they had the C-section in the first place, whether it be that this is a repeat cesarean, which we know that that's associated with more scar tissue, more risk of bleeding, more risk of infection. Whether it be um, due to hypertensive disorders, which may um, lead to an earlier delivery by cesarean. And so we know that inherently about 30% of the population is gonna, in this country will undergo cesarean deliveries every year. It's the most common procedure that women undergo. And I personally think we take it a little lightly. It's major surgery. When you say we, who are you talking about? The industry? The industry, the country, yeah, the patients sometimes. Because we think about, oh, yeah, I had a C-section. Maybe my mom had a C-section. So it's not a big deal, but it really is a big deal. There are viable reasons for the procedure with labor arrest, abnormal fetal heart rate tracing, and malpresentation being the most common but it does not always result in healthier birth outcomes for mom or baby. We went in for what was supposed to be a routine scheduled C-section on what was supposed to be the happiest day of our lives and we walked right into what was a nightmare. According to a timeline on ForkiraForMoms.com, 
Charles Johnson and his wife Kira walked into Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles in April of 2016, with plans to deliver her second child via cesarean section. Hours after giving birth, Charles noticed blood-tinged urine in her catheter. Johnson said he made Kira's doctor aware of the situation. Just over an hour later, a CT scan was ordered, but never performed. Johnson testified in 2018 that more than nine hours passed as his wife laid in pain. Six o'clock, no CT scan. She's, becoming to be, she's beginning to become pale. She's in extreme pain. Seven o'clock comes, eight o'clock comes, no CT scan. I'm begging, I'm pleading the staff to do something. And around nine o'clock, as I continue to plead for my wife's life, the staff at Cedar sinai Medical Center tells me, sir, your wife just isn't a priority right now. Kira Johnson was finally taken into surgery at 1230 in the morning, where doctors found over three liters of blood in her abdomen. She did not survive. There's no statistic that can quantify what it's like to tell an 18-month-old that his mother's never coming home. My wife deserved better. Women all over this country deserve better. In a wrongful death lawsuit, Johnson claimed Kira's bladder had been lacerated during her C-section and not sutured properly. He has since filed another lawsuit claiming Cedar sinai Medical Center's culture of racism led to his wife's death. In a statement, Cedar sinai rejected, quote, any mischaracterization of our culture and values. According to 2020 CDC data, black women continued to have the highest rate of C-sections at 36%. Back at Northwestern, Dr. Nelson says stories like Kira's highlight the need to reduce the risks. How do you make them safer? We, as a group of obstetricians, have to make it safer by preventing that first C-section. Um, I currently am the director of the Accreta Center, which means that once that first C-section occurs, the morbidity associated with subsequent pregnancies increases. We have an increased risk of a condition called placenta accreta, where that placenta invades the wall of the uterus. So preventing that first C-section. Uh, number two, I would say educating our patients. And then finally, educating our doctors. Some researchers also attribute pregnancy-related complications to a number of socioeconomic disparities. The Kaiser Family Foundation defines these as economic stability, neighborhood and physical environment, education, food, community, and social context and healthcare system. Issues community health sciences professor Eugene DeClerc told Newsy have only exacerbated an already flawed women's health system. It's important to understand the starting point for this is that we have a dysfunctional system as a whole. Now those dysfunctions actually make things more challenging for black mothers in particular but it's not as if we have this wonderful system that only excludes blacks. We have a system that serves all women less than ideally, might be the polite way to put it. The Kaiser Family Foundation says people of color face barriers to care that would ensure positive maternal and infant outcomes after birth. DeClerc adds that these hurdles impact the process from the beginning of a pregnancy to post-delivery. I think the bigger issue we're gonna to have to face is not that four days in the hospital, it's the 21 months that we're talking about. And so if you have a system that discriminates against women during their um, pre-pregnancy period, they're likely to enter pregnancy in a less healthy state. They're then likely to have more difficulty getting access to care. Once they have access to care, they may have more trouble getting community supports associated with it because Again, so much of our effort, and it's fine that it's happened, but so much of our effort has been at that time of birth. So how do you address that? You need to have community supports. Abortion rights advocates and organizations believe the overturning of Roe versus Wade in June could worsen maternal health outcomes for black women. CDC data from 2019 found black women are five times more likely to have abortions than white women. Why that reaction? I remember that Friday when the ruling came down. And I think until that moment, even though we knew it was a possibility, I don't think I had accepted it. It was, it was a, probably one of the saddest days that I've had in a long time. Because I understood the impact that that's gonna have on my patients. You know, probably 
once a week I have patients that come in and they, maybe mom has a maternal condition that a pregnancy may put her life at risk. Or she has a pregnancy that's just not viable. And for her not to have the ability to at least have that conversation about what she's going to do about that pregnancy. And I know that it's going to adversely impact all women, but especially women of color, and especially women of color who don't have resources. The CDC says 60% of maternal deaths are preventable. It's a mark Dr. Nelson says each provider must strive to reach. If you started with a question about, in essence, what would you say it boils down to? Understanding that it's bigger than you. It's bigger than all of us. And that if we don't provide care for each individual, it negatively impacts the care that we provide for all individuals. So that's the bottom line. You have to care.